All right, thank you for staying with the Monday Report Tunnel session. We're talking about the CBC curriculum and what needs to be sorted out. There's a lot of feedback coming through. Let's see if we can squeeze in some of them. Honorable Wilson Sosion says there's never been CBC curriculum in our classroom. CBC is a fraudulent curriculum intended to kill our public education system. Honorable Denita Gatti says, Trevor, I agree with Governor Barchok. CBC is way too expensive to a common parent. CBC revolves around talents. How do children with disability do this, especially when it takes them years to know or even develop themselves? That's from Honorable Denita Gatti. Let's see what else you're saying here on Twitter. Trevor Mbij at Citizen TV Kenya. Use the hashtag Monday Report. Let's bring that up real quick and see, and then also talk about the task force, the 42-member task force, and what it needs to do now from that point on to figure out how it works for them let's bring up the feedback and see and you don't leave a name or where you're texting us from you say hi trevor ask prof why he's against 844 during our times we used to do subjects such as art and craft home science agriculture music why can't we bring back those subjects instead of this cbc thing it is so sickening it is 10 30 p.m nimetoka job sahihi nimepata homework at Nitafte Skin to show a drum. What kind of thing is this? This is about my colleague here from work, a fantasy minor there, camera person, Ringe Waswa, says the recently constituted education task force should critically examine our current education system and correctly advise our government on the best education model that will ease the burden of our learners, okay? Let's bring up some of them really quick and see. There's quite a number of them. I won't be able to go through all of them. Samuel Okochi says, I believe one of the most lacking ingredients in our education system is morality, and it should also focus on training students to think of solving problems rather than preparing students for jobs. Okay. That's interesting points there. Kirimi Cliff says, CBC is a golden ring on a pig's note. It is a beautiful curriculum for the rich, but a terrible one for the poor. The difference between CBC in urban and rural classrooms is as day and night. Digital literacy is a mirage among the hoi polloi. The CBC neck portal is strange to many. Okay. Bravin says, I think CBC only focuses on immediate employer needs and is less focused on preparing learners with the flexibility needed for a more uncertain future. Okay. Still read the last one here. Lemeyan says, I got A's in mathematics, chemistry, and biology. Wanted to become a doctor, but because I didn't do so well in other subjects, I was locked out by the 844 system. CBC could have resolved this. All right, Dr. Manyasa, let me bring you back on to this. Is it, are we implementing CBC the way it should have been done? Is that where the problem is? Now, now, first, let me make it very clear that I believe CBC is a good system. Yeah. It's a good curriculum not system. We could, we could still implement CBC under 844 because that 844 is a system. We could have CBC implemented under 844. It is a good curriculum. It is good because it caters for the different needs of the different learners. And, and I have to emphasize this point because we have seen people have gone to school and studied engineering up to university after which they come back and sing. Yes, because they did not have an opportunity in school to pursue mu music, which they were talented in. And so they waste all the years. They spend public resources and private resources. And later on, they abandon all that and pursue their talent privately because the school system didn't offer them what they needed. Yeah. So this is going to try and offer every child an opportunity. I have seen people asking why, why did music and arts and craft get removed from the 844 system. They were removed because the, the purpose for which they were intended was defeated. Teachers gave children homework, go and make a, a muiko. Parents just went to the market, bought the muiko, gave their sons and daughters to take to school. So it was defeating the whole purpose for which it was intended. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so the, the, the government did not see the need to continue with the charade of saying these children have learned how to make the muiko when it was actually bought from the market from a professional person engaged in that trade. That is how it was removed. But then, that aside, after we conceived CBC, and, and we are where we are in this model because of some poor leadership at the Ministry of Education that, that has existed there for a little while. And this caused us to skip important steps in the process of implementing CBC. One such important step was that we did not have a costed implementation plan. 
by the time we started to implement. Mm. And, and I remember asking two, two people who are my friends but who are involved in the process from the government side. One of them was open with me and told me, Manuel, we don't have a costed implementation plan. The other one was condescending. She tried to make me feel like I'm not a government. <laughs> she told me, we have it. Why do you want to see it? We didn't have a costed implementation plan. A costed implementation plan will have enabled us to say, to educate a child from PP1, to university will cost this much. The government, as the primary guarantor of the right to education, is going to put in this much. Development partners, and by the way, development partners fund our education heavily, yeah. are going to put in this much. The gap that remains, the parent is going to fund. Now, there are parents who cannot afford whatever remains. What are we going to do with a child whose parents can't afford so that that child is not disenfranchised? That, those are the questions that we did not answer before rolling out. And, and I remember Amina saying very clearly, let us delay implementation for one year. It was very critical at that point that we delay. And she was hounded out of the ministry because some people wanted to score some points and say we, are, we implemented. And, and, and they let the country down. Having said that, I think that where we are now, the important questions to ask are, do we believe that 844 can continue serving the country well? When the primary objective was to give overage children in primary a skill that they could pursue after they drop out of the school system because they were not envisaged that they would reach the end of that system. And today, the children in exiting from primary are 12, 13, and 14. We still need to prepare them for the labor market after class eight. We don't need to prepare them for the labor market. Today, the government is implementing a 100% transition, so we are trying to get every child to go to secondary school. What are we trying to give these children as they go through this school system? We appreciate that a lot of children have been wasted for lack of individualized focus. Have we achieved that in the way we have tried to implement CBC? We haven't because the system requires, the curriculum requires a higher teacher to pupil ratio than we have right now. And let us accept, if you have been driving a Toyota and you choose to buy a Mercedes, you are ready to fuel at a higher cost. So this system is superior. This system, this curriculum is superior, and this curriculum requires much more resources. Are we so poor that we can't afford? No. We have a lot of resources that we are wasting. Yeah. We are employing people we don't need to employ. If I go to my village, my MCA has someone employed to sit in his office. What the hell is that fellow doing? Why can't we employ a teacher instead? Okay. We, we, <laughs> we have resources that we have just misapplied. Okay. If we choose that we want to make this system work, yeah. Kenya is not a poor country. Okay. We are a middle income country. All right. Yeah. Governor, as we wind up on this, so the 42 member task force is now in place. The, where should they start? What would you recommend? For uh, that? Now, Trevor, maybe before I respond to that, yeah. uh, of course, I agree with my colleagues, especially in some of the, their lines of thought. Uh, pertaining the CBC curriculum. One, I want to put a disclaimer on my stand, um, uh, Trevor. Uh, I'm not against competency-based curriculum, per se. But what we should be asking ourselves is, can we still achieve the same ends even within the 844 system of education? And the answer is yes. The only thing that we need to do is um, change areas of emphasis, particularly when it comes to assessment. Uh, we can still develop competencies within the 844 system of uh, uh, education. It allows. It's only the changing in our priorities and policies and our emphasis. Like, uh, we can still do something to make 844 flexible. I agree with Dr. Tari that, um, of course, uh, we are wired differently and we have different interests. Some want to be engineers, others want to be 
musicians and so forth. So the way we are wired is different, and we want to give an opportunity to every learner. And uh, the introduction of this curriculum uh, from the rationale that has been given was we wanted to have a flexible curriculum, at least to allow everybody an opportunity to learn what they want, which is still possible, because we can still make this curriculum flexible even within the 844 system of education. I think what we should be asking ourselves as a country, which is the better evil? Yeah in terms of what we have, in terms of what we are describing as CPC curriculum, in terms of what we have in terms of the aid for four system of education. Uh, because we need to be very, very careful, otherwise we will lose the gains yeah. that we have, um, we have invested a lot of resources all the way with the inception of the 844. Despite the challenges that we have been facing in terms of the mutilation that the curriculum has been facing, and that brings me to uh, the tax force that has been put in place. Of course, their mandate is very clear. Uh, I've gone through the mandates, very elaborate. Although the time is very short, within six months, they should be submitting, I think, their report or something like that. Um, one area, uh, although I'm not very comfortable with the wording, is that they want to do summative evaluation of CPC which may not be actually appropriate at this time because CBC has not gone full cycle. So doing a summative evaluation at this time may not be appropriate. It's not the right time. Maybe just do it. It's, it's normal in a, in a curriculum to do formative evaluation of the curriculum, just like we have formative assessment or evaluation of the learners in class. But um, one thing that I would wish the committee uh, uh, takes a lot of time to analyze is the impact of this CPC in terms of the areas that we have been emphasizing all along. And these are areas that are normally priorities of any education system in the world, particularly the effect of CBC on access, yeah. quality, equity, and relevance. And I want to pick from what uh, uh, Daktari Anyasa is and my colleague Williams had mentioned, yeah. uh, particularly on the issues of funding. You know, are we disadvantaging any group of our population? Mm. Because even from the comments that the public are making, is a curriculum for the rich. So that one in, clearly indicates that we may not be achieving what we want as a country in terms of giving opportunity to everybody, all the learners, mm. in terms of access. And then the, um, the other issue that affects quality is uh, the training that we give to the, to the teachers. Because when you take teachers for three days and you are calling it a training, in fact, they were describing it as reorientation. Yeah. You know, CBC is a new concept. And I want to say, as a country, I think there are so many things that went wrong with this curriculum all the way from the conceptualization of this curriculum. Mm -hmm. Talk to the so-called experts in our country. Go through the publications that we have on CPC, done by our own people, who should be leading the way, yeah. full of errors, and clearing errors for that matter, that even a first year curriculum student will not make. Mm -hmm. And these are the people that we are relying on to drive the process. <laughs> For example, if you go to, they call it um, the, the basic education framework. Yeah. And one of the objectives for teaching uh, a, a preschool is to develop critical thinking. Seriously? <laughs> critical thinking for a three years old child? That is not being serious. The legislative framework is very weak. Yeah. In fact, the, 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 the sessional paper came in 2019, mm. long after the curriculum had been rolled out. And some of the comments that were made by the education committee were ignored. And that is why we have these uh, problems that we are witnessing at the, at the moment. Yeah. Of course, personally, I've been very consistent from 2017, especially on the clearing mistakes that we made and we continue to make. So 
that is one area that I want the committee to emphasize. Yeah. And then um, the other one, of course, even as they make their recommendation, we should appreciate the challenges that we have as a country. Of course, it is a new trend all over, world over. Even in Europe, I think EU developed their own framework, uh, reverence framework for aid competencies eh, that they must develop. But the way it was implemented, each country determined the, the direction that they wanted to take. For some countries, they took those competencies and they were taught under subjects. Yeah. For others, it was across the subjects. And Trevor, I want to mention this. Even as I insist that 844 is the best curriculum for this country. You know, when we talk of competency-based curriculum, people are imagining that we have run away from teaching mathematics, mm. from teaching English, from teaching sciences. We are teaching the same subjects. The only thing is that we are teaching and at the same time developing competencies. The only thing that changed, and that is what I want to be changed in the 844 system, is the areas of priorities. Okay. And then finally, the issues that I would also wish them that they, I mean, they look at is the issue of financing. I think that is the area that we have a challenge, even when it came to the 844 system of education yeah. and what actually encourage this mutilation of the, uh, the 844 system was uh, in terms of the cost of that uh, system. Okay. It was very expensive, uh, equipping the workshops and so forth. And I'm in agreement yeah. with the sentiments that have been given the one by Wainaiji that we can refer to the old system, yeah. bring back the art and craft, the music, and so forth, but redesign the assessment to emphasize on what we want development of talent, development of competencies, yeah. and so forth. It is still possible for us to achieve what we want, okay. even under the 844 system. George, can this be restructured? You already mentioned the areas of focus, the teacher training, parental involvement, and assessment. Can we steer this in the right direction, and what would that take? Um, Trevor, I think it, uh, we, can, we can do anything that we want, yeah. uh, but we are going to have to be very realistic. First of all, that a curriculum is, is, not, is not something you can change uh, based on somebody, somebody's whims. Yeah. yeah, whimsically, you can't say that, okay, fine, I don't like CBC, so let's go back to 844. Because there is a procedure. There is a process that is followed to change a curriculum. Secondly is that <clears throat> uh, at grade six, that means that there has been eight years of experience, two years at preschool and six years at, uh, at primary school. And uh, they are going to graduate, which means if we decide right now that we don't like uh, CBC and we want to change back to uh, 844, we are going to disadvantage the, those who have already experienced it. Okay. But be that as it may, I would say uh, that uh, the, the place we need to be careful is in listening to people's opinions. And I have had a lot of opinion since CBC started, and opinion has been passed as fact. Yes, uh, I have had uh, Socion, uh, Honorable Socion, saying that there is no CBC happening in our classrooms, and it is his opinion. Yet he says it as if it is a fact, and there are people who follow what he is talking about. And I have listened when uh, I spent some time with the, uh, the Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development, uh, and the people at the institute are. Are, are professors of repute, uh, Professor Charlie Suchieg Ongondo, uh, Professor Juan, who, who, was a, who, who led yeah. the reform before he came to the Ministry of, of Education, and everyone at, uh, at, uh, at the Institute are very well-trained uh, uh, curriculum developers. And so when somebody says that <laughs> the people at the Institute did not good, do a good job, uh, I, 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 I really doubt it. I highly doubt it because I looked at the process and I saw how it moved. Yeah? Uh, there has been a claim that this system is expensive. It is, Trevor. 
Yeah. And it should. Education should not be cheap. Yeah? The only thing is that uh, we as a country should budget for education so that we fund public education using uh, taxpayers' money. We should not ask parents eh, to, to buy five liters of oil, like you said, yeah. and bring to school. If we need five liters of oil, then we need to budget for it as a country. And that is what the job at the Ministry of Education should entail, to take care of the cost of educating a child through public education. If you want to ask parents to bring five liters of oil, it should only happen in a private institution. Yeah. Lastly, Trevor, uh, pro, uh, Professor Governor uh, loves 844. I don't. I experience 844. <laughs> 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 and in my view, 844 was the training ground yeah. for corruption in this country. And I will demonstrate. Um, 844 focused on people's heads. And uh, it only entertained and celebrated people who scored good grades. <clears throat> Now, what that did was everyone in this country who went through 844 has been struggling to be number one. Mm. Yes? So that you are number one no matter what you have to do. If you have to kill someone, if you have to steal, yes? If you meet anyone who has experienced 844, and I have, the conversations they have is, uh, have you built a house? Do you have a car? What kind of car are you driving? Are you ahead of me? That is what we are talking about yeah. as people who experienced 844. Then we are surprised that we are a corrupt nation. 844 was the reason that we as a country are super corrupt in the way we deal with things. So we needed as a country to step away from 844 as a priority, so that we can reset our morals, so that we can only build competencies and everyone is able to do something with their life. Okay. Yes. All right. We're running out of time here, <laughs> gentlemen, so we'll have to leave it there. But I see a lot of feedback coming through. Let's read some of them. I see true parents are over-involved. There's need to understand the guiding principles on parental empowerment and engagement. KICD to relook at the curriculum design that may be allowing over-involvement of parents or we are we having a misinterpretation of the design? The working party must focus on one, clear transition program, plan, two, financing framework, Three, good retooling program. Four, infrastructural needs of the curriculum, both at junior and secondary school. And five, parental empowerment and engagement. That's from Indimuli Kahi, the, the chairperson, Kenya Secondary School Heads Association. Let's see what you're saying also as we wind up on this conversation. Let's bring that up and see. At Trevor Mbidi at Citizen TV Kenya using the hashtag Monday Report. There are quite a number of them that came through. Let's bring that up and read them as we wind up on this. And I want to thank all of you for coming through. This evening, His Excellency Professor Hilary Barichok, Governor for Bomet, former teacher, Dr. Emmanuel Manyasa, Executive Director of Sawa Agenda, and George William, Curriculum Development and Education Expert as well. This is a conversation we can't end now. And on behalf of everybody else who made this possible, we want to thank you also for watching as we wind up on this series of feedback that's coming through, if we can do that and bring it. Telin Wawi says, as an involved parent of CBC, I would choose the system of 844 any day. What the system needs is review to address the challenges, not abolishing it. The CBC kids are different from us who went through 844, okay? See if I can squeeze in just a few more. We've really pressed for time here. Mutai Obed says CBC isn't bad, but it needs some view amendments to be fully accepted. Otherwise, it's a burden to the parents. It can wait. Let's rather improve our 844 system, okay? And Bore Collins says the decision by William, Dr. President William Ruto to form a CBC task force is welcome. Public participation is key, and every stakeholder should be heard. Kenya needs an education system that is agreeable to all and that does not hurt any person. Okay. Michuki says CBC is the best education system for this generation. We need to polish some few issues and simplify the delivery of the curriculum to provide level playing ground for the private schools and rural public institutions as well. Let's see if we can squeeze in just one final one here. Kolo 254 says CBC should be abolished and the 844 system be reviewed in terms of examination and the mode of testing the student exams should be done as that of TVET institution. Students' performance should not only be determined by one exam. 
All right. I believe that's where we leave it for now. There's quite a number of them. We couldn't finish all of them. But this is a discussion that we'll continue having all through the season as the task force takes their job and do the public participation and review the entire education system. My name is Trevor Ombija. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.